Secretary of State Hillary Clinton really summed up uh, these new security pat-downs and how people feel about them when I talked to her yesterday on Face the Nation. Listen. So clearly there is a need. Now, if there is a way to limit the number of people who are going to be uh, put through surveillance, that's something that I'm sure can be uh, considered. But uh, everybody's trying to do the right thing. Okay. And, I, Madam I, and I understand how difficult it is and yeah. how offensive it must be for the people who are going well, through it. Uh, uh, final question. Uh, my time is up. But would you submit to one of these pat downs? Not if I, not if I could avoid it. <laughs> no, I mean, who would? <laughs> Thank you very much. Right. And so the Secretary of State's reaction, I don't think there's any plan to uh, pat her down anytime soon. Uh, she has security agents that travel with her. But Bob Orr, uh, you cover the transportation beat. I mean, uh, this TSA chief, uh, did he see this one coming? No, he didn't. This is a tough problem, Bob. Look, we saw what happened last Christmas with Abdul Matalab in Detroit. This is a guy that put explosives in his underwear, virtually undetectable. It's an insidious type threat, and the threat is real and it's ongoing. So now the government has to find a way to try to uh, mitigate that threat without inconveniencing everybody. And so they have these screeners, these uh, advanced imaging technology screeners, to look for things like this and hidden weapons. And the people that opt out of these screeners then can be subject to pat-downs. But very, very few people have pat-downs. I mean, the media has had a field day with this because it sounds really bad on the surface. Uh, but the fact is uh, you're kind of damned if you do and damned if you don't from the TSA perspective. But I mean, this uh, opens all kind of possibilities. I mean, what if children, I mean, we teach our children not to allow people to touch them and then, you know, you're gonna put them through something like this. I mean, it, it, this whole thing is just a little bizarre for me, quite frankly. It is. I mean, I think the question we have to ask though is what should we do instead of this? I mean, we can't uh, obviously sacrifice a plane load of people. Nobody wants to do that. Nobody would feel good about that kind of thing. Yet the threat from al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula is very real. Now, if people would go through these advanced image screenings, uh, we wouldn't have the pat-down question except for those few number of people that alarm the machine, either set up the metal detector or something suspicious is seen in one of these images. But I want to tell people one thing. I've been in a booth, uh, in the privacy booth, where they look at these advanced images in a test. And these things have been blown up to be virtual strip searches, naked x-rays. It's not like that. It's really not all that revealing. It's certainly not exciting. If anything, when I looked at it, I had to question whether there were enough details there, believe it or not, to actually find a weapon. Say a gun, you'd probably find that. But a, but a shiv, a plastic knife, maybe not. Uh, an underwear bomb, maybe not. So this is really a tough line of trying not to invade everyone's privacy to the nth degree and still provide us some measure of security. And the TSA, frankly, is trying to figure it out going along. All right. Well, Bob, thank you for bringing, up, uh, bringing us up to date on exactly where this is. It sounds like not much is going to change. Not uh, for the for between now future. And Thanksgiving. No, not at all. But I want to get kind of the, uh, the fallout from all this. Uh, Jamal Simmons, who's a Democratic consultant. Uh, Matt Makoviak is a Republican consultant. Mac, uh, uh, this is not good politics, that's for sure. It may be good security, but boy, it has really gotten people stirred up. That's right, Bob, and, and uh, obviously the, the holiday season is the busiest travel season of the year, so people are already, I think, stressing out about uh, the challenges that uh, traveling presents uh, in the current circumstance. Um, I think people feel like the, the sort of the, the, the prescription doesn't quite meet the diagnosis. I'm sure it does for this, maybe this one case, this Abdul Muttalib case, um, but I think the perception out there is that, that people are getting patted down all across the board, when in fact it's only for f folks who are not willing to submit to a full body scan. Uh, only since the beginning of the month, about 1% of, of people have been, have been patted down. It's a very small percentage. These full body scanners have only been installed in 70 of 450 airports across the country. They're ramping that up. So I I'd like to see us go more towards a, a behavior, uh, sort of analyzing behavior in terms of screening rather than uh, analyzing people's, what's on their person. Uh, but I think right, right now the public is, is very skeptical. What do you think, Jim? Well, it, I tend to actually agree with Matt. I think this is a very tough thing politically because people are traveling and they're finding this to be a, uh, a somewhat obtrusive. But again, if you get the full body uh, scan, then you don't have to go through the pat down. What occurs to me is that we don't know what happens if the terrorists realize that there's an exception for 80 year old grandmas and there's an exception for little kids, then why not try to hide something on an 80-year-old grandma or hide something on a little kid, get them through the security, and then get it off of them once you get on the other side of the barrier. So we can't just say, 
you know, there are exceptions for folks because we think, oh, well, the 80-year-old grandma can't be a terrorist and let her off the hook. Um, we've got to have some sort of a standard that everybody has to go through that we're all comfortable with that protects everyone that, uh, that's on that airplane. Some people would say that uh, we've come to this because we're afraid to profile these people and it would be politically incorrect if we did that, if we picked out people that's, you know, if we made a profile and said most of these guys look like this or act like this, uh, and so we, we, we now find ourselves having to go through this. But then we also know that what Al-Qaeda is doing is trying to recruit people who don't fit the typical profile. So you end up with someone like, the, like Richard Reeves, who has a, who's an underwear bomber from last Christmas, uh, Richard, or the shoe bomber, rather. Uh, you end up with Richard Reeves, who was a British national, who I think was of Caribbean descent. Um, and then you find like the American Taliban over in Afghanistan that we found, um, who's a blonde haired kid from, you know, from America. So you, the minute you begin to sort of say, well, they look like this, I imagine that these very creative people who are trying to get to us will find someone who doesn't look like that to perpetrate the crime. I think that's right. I think uh, one of the things that's that's frustrating about this is that it seems like all of our procedures are out there in the for, for, in the public domain, uh, so that terrorists uh, can can sort of work the system because they know exactly what it is we're doing. I wish we would hold a little bit back. You provide information to Congress and to uh, to the regulators, but we should hold some some of this back. And we ought to have a system that is adaptable, uh, one that can can be changed on, on very short notice. Um, but I, again, I think I think they're trying to sort of it's kind of a CYA um, operation here. They're trying to make sure that another circumstance does not take place like did uh, last Christmas. But again, I'd like to see us go towards uh, analyzing folks' behavior. If you're buying, if you're paying with cash, if you're going one way, if you're from a country on a, on a certain list, uh, we need to analyze those types of behaviors and, and not be patting down, uh, you know, uh, some of these cases that we've seen in the, in the public have just been outrageous. Uh, a woman having, having to remove her prosthetic uh, breast and all kinds of just absurd situations that do nothing to make us more secure. You know, so many times, it seems to me, we wind up uh, utilizing all the technology and stuff, but the one thing we don't utilize is common sense. <laughs> and sometimes I think that's what gets us into this, these messes that we find ourselves in. Well, thank you all both for giving us a little uh, perspective on this. Thank you.